What you're going to do is you want your weight towards your back foot because you want to be able to do this very easily from your stance. Lift, set it down. Lift, set it down. Now your hands, you want your shoulders up slightly and your chin down. You want your hands up. In Muay Thai, we keep those hands at eye level because what did we just cover in the, in the seminar out there? Elbows. You got to keep your hands up tight because an elbow across the scalp opening a cut is going to end the fight just as quickly as getting punched in the jaw. Boxers, they protect themselves keeping their, keeping their hands down here by their jaw. And they'll, and they'll take a punch to their forehead. Actually, they'll purposely block with their forehead. But in Muay Thai, we don't want to do that because you don't want to block an elbow with your forehead. That's a fight. Okay. Got to make sure that you keep nice and balanced. Okay. So that you can lift to block. Lift to block. Okay. Now what we're going to do is let's do, we're going to start our first footwork drill. <coughs> okay. okay. One step at 45. Step. Step. After each step, you return to that traditional stance that I just showed you. Then, step. We're going to actually switch stances during the footwork drills. Two steps in each direction. Return the stance after <coughs> each step. When you get to the other side, turn around. Okay, let's go. In Muay Thai, you do not step like this. That's a big no-no. You lose, you lose mobility. It's like this. If you step like right here and somebody hits you, this immediately puts you back on your heels. You've got one direction to go. Back. Always step on the ball of your foot. Okay? Because then if somebody hits you, you can, you can roll with it better and adjust because you can push off. But if you got your heel down, that's not going to happen. Okay, well anyway, I'm, moving, I'm sorry, moving right along. The, now the whole point is, in Muay Thai, maintaining a proper balance is how you're going to win the fight. If Todd starts attacking you, he just, uh, yeah, and, I, and I start stumbling around, moving around, even if I'm blocking, like I'll give you a perfect example, uh, throw a kick across my arms, please. Okay, in, in just about any martial art, that kick is considered to have been blocked. In Muay Thai, it isn't. In, in a proper Muay Thai match, he kicks me across the arms. Even if I, if I absorb it, that kick still is counted as having scored. It's a low point. It is a low point, but it's one of the, it's one of the lowest scoring techniques, except for the fact that it does consistently score. However, kick again. And I let myself get knocked off balance by it. All of a sudden, it's, a, it's like now I've, uh, in Muay Thai scoring, the power and effect of the technique can make a technique become more valuable or less valuable. It's not just, it's not just you know, hey, a punch is a point, a kick is a two point, and that's it. It's like, no, it's like, hey, I might just be lit. I might be throwing punches, and, it, and it's like, even a, you, you see Rocky, the Rocky movies? Somebody <laughs> doing the Rocky Balboa? He's, so he's doing that to me in a Muay Thai fight, okay? Bam, bam, bam. And I step back and throw one kick to his arms, I'm winning the fight. His punches didn't score, my kick did. Next year, next year's, uh, one of the, the, when we do the strategy seminar, I'm going to explain the whole Muay Thai scoring system. So anyway, so maintaining a proper balance, so it doesn't matter what he what he throws at me, okay? Just come pull through. I maintained my balance the whole time. He wasn't knocking me off balance. I was moving back on my own, not letting him push me back. So I'm nullifying a lot of the scoring that he would be making. However, he comes in and bull rushes me again, and I'm Oh my god, I might as well just quit and go home because he's it's like his score has just gone through the roof. So this is why balance and footwork is so important in Muay Thai. He starts bull rushing. Maintaining proper balance. 
while I throw my techniques and defenses, <clears throat> now my strikes are counting. Whereas he's bull rushing me, and I'm like, I'm not scoring at all. Okay? So anyway, I did the big colorful description. So I hope you guys understand what I'm getting at. Now it's time for our next footwork drill. Back to my side. Okay. Then step to 45, and then pivot. 45, pivot. 45, pivot. Jen, come here for me. This is what we're doing. <coughs> After I do my step to pivot, just take one step back. Okay? Now, uh, but don't move this on time. When I step and pivot, it's really important that when I step and pivot, I'm facing her. A common mistake, because a lot of times when we use this next footwork, you're using it defensively. She throws a cross. If I stop, if I step and pivot out here facing her hand, it's not doing me one bit of good. Actually, I'm doing her a favor. What I want to do, though, I'm getting, I'm getting an angle of advantage. But if I over-rotate, what am I, what am I going to attack? I mean, her fist. Okay, <laughs> okay so you got to bear this in mind when you do this drill. Step back. Always step and pivot. No, no, wait. Step back. Step back. Step back. Step back. Step back. Notice I'm staying on the ball of my foot when I step. <coughs> Okay. Anyway, then I'm moving my movie. Alright, now our first now before before we start doing our first striking drill, you can you don't need to actually hold this yet. Is I, I want to tell everybody about a concept that I that I applied to Muay Thai for all my students and fighters. It's called trim tab. Heard that one before? Yes. Okay, now trim tab is actually the air nozzle trim. They use it in boating and they use it in airplanes. It's this little device that's on the end of the rudder, which uh, and basically the whole concept of it is some is the little minutest movement is like makes a big difference and, and the way and the way I apply it to Muay Thai is that you're getting the maximum amount of energy from the minimal amount of effort. Okay, so basically what what I'm trying to get at is learning how to use leverage so that you're not using your own body power. A lot of times when people punch when they're learning to punch, they're muscling through with their arms. When they're learning to kick, <clears throat> and they're muscling through with their legs. <clears throat> well, first of all, it's like you're not kicking anywhere near as hard as you can. Second of all, it's like you're wearing yourself out. You're fatiguing your muscles. And then what's going to happen is after you strike a couple of good ones, then all of a sudden the technique's going to start breaking down. You're going to get sloppy. And then you're just going to be completely ineffective. Now it's time for the... So it's all about learning all the little ways that you can conserve energy and still strike powerful for the right front. We're going to uh, go a little bit lower. There you go. All right. We're going to start off with a push kick. Okay. When you throw a push kick, lift the knee first. Launch out. Uh, stand, stand really firm for me because I'm going to brace myself. Okay. Between the ball of the foot and the shoulder on the same side. You want to try to make everything lock out like a pull cue. And that's how I'm able to move this big gigantic guy back. If, hold the ground really good, okay? If I don't do that, and I stand upright, he barely moves. The reason why is I've left an angle here in my hip. So when I strike, the resistance causes some of my energy to go out this way rather than everything going this way. That's why you want to straighten everything out like everybody's played pool. The energy is thick, all going straight forward. You're trying to turn yourself into a pool cue. But if your pool cue had angles in it and you hit, the ball wouldn't go anywhere near as far or anywhere near as far because the angle would cause energy of the thrust to go out the wrong way. Okay, so lift, 
Strike, bring it back to this position, and then down. Okay? <clears throat> All right? Okay. Let's look, 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 look. Oh! No, 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 no. We're not playing that. This is Muay Thai. Yes, sir. You earn what you get. Yes, sir. Sit down your stance. Go ahead and you get your push in. Step in and punch. 
I can step back and kick across her front. Okay, I, I, know a lot, I know a lot of options here. There's somebody well, looking for you in the window. What you guys to focus on? <laughs> Sneaking up on Stephen K. Hayes during the ninjutsu seminar, shooting him with a Nerf gun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That should be on your next flyer. <laughs> Is that a couple years ago? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Now, here, now, here's one of the most important things about dealing with a push kick. Okay? Actually, one of the most important things about dealing with any technique is you don't wait to identify for 100% sure what's coming before you move. I see her start to move, I'm already moving. Because if I wait until the kick is already on its way, the kick hits me. Okay? All I see is that body adjustment, I know it's a kick, I'm moving. You'll, because what will happen is like after you after you train with more time for a while, you'll start to recognize the body motions. So that you see it's like as she starts to up, here comes the push kick. You see you start stepping forward, here comes the punch. Up, oh, she's stepping out, here comes the round kick. So you start to see what's coming. Okay? So let's partner up. Okay, what we're going to be doing is working on our cross. The cross to me is the most important punch in Muay Thai because that's the one you're going to get, that's the one that you're probably going to get the most smile job. Uh, the jab, uh, not, I'm sorry, not the jab, the cross and the left hook are going to be the two punches that we work with the most. Yes, we use the jab, yes, we use the uppercut, but they're not as essential tools. You can do more Muay Thai with your cross. And your and your hook for the jab. That's what your that's what your lead foot's for. Okay, for the cross. Going back to what I was just talking about. Okay, is making sure that you're not jamming yourself, and also making sure that you're not snatching your hand back too quick. You got to drive through your target. Okay? okay. Notice I'm keeping my guard up when I do this. I'm not. Doing this, this doesn't this do me any good when he throws the counter round because <coughs> that, that's going to be a very popular thing to discover. Is if you do this, he's going to slip this way while bring that round kick straight up. I see. Well, I don't get that. Yeah, but, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, but you, when you spar her, she's that flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I step in with it, but I'm still maintain. I'm still paying close attention to what my range is. So that when I strike, I've got full extension. Okay? Now what I like to teach, there, there's two different schools of thought. Some people will teach you block my rear leg. Some people will drive the knee down and come in when they throw the cross. I like to straighten it. More to push myself into the cross. Both are correct. Are you grabbing yourself all about straightening? Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm up on the ball on my foot and just launching myself forward almost like a track star. Okay. They're both correct boxing technique. So, yes? What's the mechanical difference between straight leg versus dropping it? You're drop this way you're dropping your weight into it. Okay. okay. So you get some you get some gravity going. Okay. But it'll, and, it, and it can also depend on what are you going to do next. We never throw any strike as a single strike. That's why, I tell you what, I was teaching the kids class this morning, and I was teaching them the Superman punch. I despise the Superman punch. I think it is the most vile, evil, disgusting technique ever. Not because it's not a good technique, it's because people have overplayed it. It's a cheap technique. Here, I'll show you. Hold that up for me. We see UFC guys do that all the time. And you see them do nothing else because they don't train anything else. They 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 got sold on this concept that the Superman punches this all-powerful technique. How many people have you ever actually seen get hurt by that punch? I can name two, and I've watched thousands of fights. And, and it's just it's just a waste. It's like so instead of me doing and spending all this energy for that, I might as well just go or. And not expend anywhere near the 
the energy, and I'm distracting them another way that they have that they're not used to. Anyway, uh, enough about the super much. I hate it. Um, <laughs> So, and, yeah, uh, now, now you made me f totally forget. Uh, okay, one thing, uh, let's partner up, uh, spend a little bit of time going across, and then <coughs> elbow out. Proper boxing technique, elbow stays down, okay? All the way until right here. Then it then arm pops, okay? All right, let's try it. because of the way your opponent's guarding. Good, good. And then right, right at the end, when you twist, the palm is either to the floor, or you can even twist it so that your thumb is all the way to the floor. I don't know shoulder workout I know. Okay, so I'm, we're going to pretend I'm holding a pad. 
I'm going to reach forward and hold her shoulder. Let me show you how I'm holding her shoulder. On the outside of her shoulder, because I want to make sure that when she throws this punch, she cannot wind up. This is the most common mistake with the left hook. People want to throw that left hook, and they want to wind it up. You wind it up, oh, you're throwing a left hook. Let me, let me just punch you in the cross. Okay? So you want to be able to disguise your punch and just be able to drop into it. And you have to learn how to develop power. This, take, this takes time. That's why we're doing it. All right. So we're gonna, you're going to pretend that you're, okay, put your, put your hand forward. Okay, here, let's, let's go over this way. See how he's holding my hand? I mean, holding my shoulder? And then just this little short ring. Okay? You gotta to learn to use your body. Once again, trim tap. Okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to muscle, muscle pull with my arm. That's gonna waste energy and I'm gonna fatigue my shoulder. Okay? I want my body to do all the work. Okay, when he got, now we were just, we were actually just doing this in the class outside, so we're only going to spend about a minute or so doing this one. But he goes and throws his left hook. Okay? I get my hand here to stop him in the crook of his arm. Reach and grab his head. Yes! And throw the knee. Okay? And everybody did participate in my regular classes outside, so th this shouldn't be anything new. All it is is just this particular one. Block here. Grab behind the head, skip, knee. Hold on, clinch work. You guys are going to love it. But anyway, basics of clinch work. We're going to start from this position. One hand behind the head, the other hand on the, on the bicep. Okay? Reach in, push away, grab, clinch. Okay? Now, but here's going to be the trick. When he feels me go, he's going to go at the same time because he doesn't, he doesn't want to let me get ahead of him. Okay? Now, notice I'm, keep, I'm standing up, I'm keeping my chin up, my hips in, and I'm on the balls of my feet, okay? That's <laughs> good. <laughs> anyway, now, don't make a mistake. Back to, back to the concept of trim tap. Did anybody notice what he's doing wrong? Jen? You're not relaxed. Thank you. Okay, the important thing about clinch work that makes it work is you're not trying to out-muscle each other. You're not trying to overpower one another. It's all about technique and leverage, okay? So that, like for instance, him, with proper technique and leverage, can make Todd go flying with a, okay? It's all technique and leverage. I've seen guys smaller than him throw guys bigger than you, okay? So, <laughs> so, and the thing is, if you feel somebody get tensed up, that's, that's my favorite that's thing in the clinch. Because I'm like, oh, okay, let me just rest some weight on you too. Because he's going to get, he's going to fatigue all of his muscles, and then once he's fatigued, then I'm going to go to town. It's a party. Okay, so stay, stay relaxed, nice and loose, okay? Loose, but not loose. Loose, okay? <laughs> anyway, so the whole now this is the this is the drill I want. What what he and I are doing without the throw is just when you feel your partner move in and push out and move here, you do the same thing. S keep your hips tight because if if you start to back up like it's judo, you're gonna eat the knees. Okay. Try to, try to stay relaxed. Okay? Yes. Okay, we were covering this when we did that knee combination before. Remember? One, two, three. Well, this is what, this is what I want you guys to do. Is we're going to practice that stretched out knee. This is, we're going to make sure that when you guys go to throw a knee, whoever you're partnered with, they're going to remember it. So we need to posture up one. The, this side. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I stretch all the way back, and then I even hop into it. Yes. Yes. 
Okay? Yes. You guys ready? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to 
wall. There he is. <laughs> Good.
keep everything close to the body and it becomes like a bundle of bamboo rather than a single bamboo. Okay? Uh, another, another way to think of it, if you're holding it, like for those of you who've done karate, which is most of you, you hold a board out here and somebody can snap it. Hold the board here against the wall. <laughs> you, get, you, get my, you get my point, okay? Keep it close to your body to protect your, to protect your arms. Yes, they'll rack it up points, but you're going to have a good counter. Because here's the other trick. Okay, I want you to really lay a kick in here, okay? Okay? I'm not moving. Uh, kick in, okay? Just like I was talking about earlier in the, in the class, if you let yourself get knocked off balance, all of a sudden that kick across the arms, which normally only counts a little bit, now is suddenly a huge value technique. What I want to do is maintain good stance, good structure, so that when he rips that kick in here, bam, bam, I'm already on top of him. I've just I've taken the kick, and I've already like kicked him with like two or three things before he's back in position. Therefore, I've completely nullified his attack, and I've scored instead. Okay? Does everybody get the idea? Yes. Let's go ahead and try it. If you need somebody, like if you guys have trouble kicking guys and practice it, we're only going to practice this for a minute because I got a couple more drills I want to do before the class is over. So, I can't kick. Are you guys going to be able to kick? I'm okay with it. Okay. Is this face level? Face level? Uh, but kick across the body. Kick your own little kick. Instead of the out, keep it in. Most of it is. Right. Yeah, I don't want him to smell what you actually have to slice it. Oh, okay. Sometimes, uh, you know how to do that kick where you uh, block with your shin? Get a uh, throw kick, but continue to drive through with your knee. Okay, this is going to be harder because now he, all he's got to do is flex this against me as I like push away. As, as, so it's going to make it harder for me to for me to come in. So that's why that's why you pull, you grab here and pull at the same time. So if he does this, I can ankle pick and get and get him to go down. Okay? You guys ready to try it? Yes. Let's go. Yes. No, not. The insurance coverage. You know what legs are going to be like? You got to get it. Step in. That's it. But now it's for members. You got to get it. I'm a professional here. Hi. I can follow that. Go ahead and take each other down at least once. You don't have to take each other down. 
it down each time, but yeah, go. Because right, you get you gotta feel how to get that lever. You really have to come in on it. If you're gonna try to drag the kick from out here, then you're gonna annoy it. But if you step through it, bam. Good. Excellent. If one guy's fourth, once they hit the ground, you're not allowed to hit anymore, right? Right, right. Now, mind you, if they haven't quite reached the ground yet, like if you started your kick before they hit the ground, they hit the ground, and then your kick lands, it was still a little shut. Uh, guard up, please. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a simple jab. You step in with the jab, draw back. And then bring the elbow. Okay? What you're doing? Okay? One, draw back, crash in with the elbow. You're trying to split the guard. Okay? So that it's. The elbow comes completely overhead. I call this an inverted elbow. It's going, you're trying to make it come straight down the middle, not down at a slight angle. Straight down the middle because Thai boxers hold their guard like here. If he comes in with an angled elbow, go ahead. Real easy to block. If he brings it straight down the middle, I'm bleeding a lot. Okay? One, draw back to wind this up. Okay? Because you've already distracted, you've already popped them and snapped their head back with that jab. And then just.